In this video, we'll be talking about some of the different strategies for using motion, and then some of the benefits of it as well. We'll look at different motion examples, and we'll go over where to find inspiration. More importantly though, we'll figure out how to evaluate that inspiration so we can see how it's relevant to our own projects. For the Meaningful Motion UI course, we'll be focusing on four different types of user interface motion. Each of these areas will overlap, but it definitely gives us a framework to discuss and evaluate some of the different design directions. It'll help us figure out why and where to use motion. The first is conversational motion. This is motion used by teams to communicate amongst themselves. It can be useful for agreeing on design directions or for research and testing. Functional motion is the next motion category. This is motion that improves usability or user experience. This is things like providing feedback, indicating where someone is in a complex flow, or demonstrating what the next step is that they should take. The third category is structural motion. This is using references to the real world to create a sense of space in your applications. Structural motion takes a lot of inspiration from Google's material design, so if you're familiar with some of material design, then this area of motion will seem pretty intuitive. And if not, we're gonna look at a few examples from their design system. And then finally, we have emotional motion. This is motion that demonstrates the feeling and tone of a brand or something that evokes a certain feeling in a user. This is the bulk of what you'll find on Dribbble or UI movement. The best places I've found for motion design inspiration are Dribbble, UI movement, Uplabs, and Muesli. There are hundreds of examples from motion designers that are much more talented than myself. But when we're looking at these animations, it's definitely good to think about what category they would fall in, why a designer made certain decisions, and what elements are relevant to our own projects. All right, with that said, let's jump in. First, we'll be looking at conversational motion. Conversational motion can range from sketches to wireframes to full high fidelity animated prototypes. It's basically anything you're using to communicate with your team or users. It won't always make it into the final project, but it's a really important step of the process. It can help you get stakeholder buy-in or just keep everyone on the same page. First, we'll look at this expanding card example. It's not really in a live interface. It's totally wireframed and abstract, but it does indicate the personality behind the app. There's a bit of a bounce and the individual items are separated by the animation's timing. Next, we'll jump over to this process image. It's pretty low fidelity. The motion is really being communicated through the sketches more than the actual motion of the dribble shot. Through these sketches, they're able to go into some of the goals and the feelings of the design without having to get into the specific animation properties. This is the type of motion that we'll be looking at in the next video, and there are a couple related articles on using motion in design systems. Functional motion is a broad category, but it's pretty similar to any usability patterns you'd be using outside of motion. In the course, we'll be creating onboarding sequences, progress sliders, and loading animations. These are all examples of functional animation. The first example here is an alignment indicator. The buttons slide over rather than snapping immediately, and the alignment of the icon demonstrates how the text will align too. You can also see there's some subtle click feedback. The user is getting an idea that their click was registered and the effect that it will have. Then we'll look at this progress indicator. It's a pretty similar concept, the user hits upload, and then it not only animates the click, but the progress of the upload. And then the final complete state. Structural motion relies on physics, space, and hierarchy to give depth and dimension to an interface. This type of motion has become more important in recent years as design has become flatter. We lose some of the indicators from buttons and fields, but by demonstrating those things through motion, we can have more minimal interfaces without losing usability. This first example is a pretty literal interpretation of structural motion. As the user clicks and swipes, they actually move through a physical space. This physical space makes a lot of sense because it's a concept for Airbnb, but it can be used more abstractly too. In this data visualization example, the pie chart and visual indicators shift as someone swipes through the information, and the color transitions emphasize the different parts of the data even further. Since material design relies so heavily on structural motion, let's take a quick look at how Google implements some of this. So first we have their principles, informative, focused, and expressive. It doesn't really give you any of the specifics, but it shows how they're kind of approaching this in general. 
As we scroll though, you can already see there's some motion. It really mimics the scrolling of the site. And then on this first example, it's talking about hierarchy, but we can see things are moving in and out and that gives us a sense of space that matches that hierarchy. And then as we continue, you can see that the labels on the left and right show that the images are on the left and right. And then as we move over to elevation, you can see things are moving in and out and up and down, and there's really a whole structure outside of the flat screen that you're seeing. And then here we have some of the specifics of how that's applied. And then finally, we have emotional motion. Emotional motion shares a lot in common with the Disney animation principles and traditional animation. It can be found in movie credits, illustrations, and plenty of places outside of UI design. This first example has a ton of motion and personality. The bounciness of the motion matches the vibrancy of the colors. It has a happy, playful feeling that becomes even stronger through its use of motion. This example is from a marketing site for a business-to-business -business product. The main value they provide is doing work more quickly, automation, and making more sales. They're using motion, but in a really different way. It creates a sense of trust and efficiency, and it gives you a sense that this is something that might actually be able to help you do your job better. And then finally, we have an AI example. Similarly to Siri or something like that, it has a futuristic forward-looking sense to it, but the motion is a bit more organic and friendly than some of the more mechanical functional examples that are often seen in this area. If we look at all three together, we can see they're all using motion, but they really feel different. Later in this course, we'll look at how we can use custom easing curves and how we can animate individual properties to create similar personality effects.